everyone, this is Foxy Papa Smurf, or FPS Gamer for short, and today we are doing something a little bit different. It's about building my very first PC. The reason I'm building this machine primarily is because my current computer can't quite keep up with the workload that I've been placing on it, namely editing videos, uh, using Photoshop and Adobe Premiere and After Effects. It just can't keep up. So what I decided to do is instead of spending money on another pre-built machine is build my own. The benefits to building your own machine are numerous. First and foremost, it's usually cheaper than going to Best Buy or some other retailer and buying a pre-built machine. You can get the performance where you want it. And on top of that, when your machine gets outdated, you don't need to buy an entirely new PC. You just swap out the parts that you need to. So let's do a quick breakdown. First and foremost, this is a Windows 10 machine and I managed to find a key, an OEM key, for $31.10. I found that key online. The processor is an i7-5820K by Intel. This is a great processor for heavy workloads such as video editing. If I was strictly into video gaming and didn't need any workload type specifications, I would have gone with a much cheaper processor. But this is a 6-core processor, one of the cheapest 6-core processors you can get. It's very easily overclocked and it was perfect for my needs. I managed to find that on eBay for $349.95 and I found it at that price because this is an open box model. These usually retail for around $400. The motherboard is an MSI Gaming 7 X99A and this one is jam-packed full of features at a price that won't break the bank. At $239.99, I couldn't pass up on such an awesome looking motherboard with loads of features. As you can probably tell by now, I'm going for a black and red theme, and the motherboard fits perfectly for what I'm going for. The graphics card is a GTX 970 by Asus. It's their Strix model, and I understand that the GTX 1070 and 1080 are now available, but considering I only have 1080p monitors, and I only do very occasional gaming on my PC, most of my gaming is done on my consoles because I enjoy my exclusives, I couldn't really justify spending basically twice as much for a 1070. Of course, assuming you can find one, at the time I'm making this video, they are very, very hard to come by, unless of course you're willing to pay into the early adopters fee. And I managed to find this graphics card for $269.99, but I had a $30 mail-in rebate, which I already sent in, bringing the price down to $239.99, which is a really great price for a 970, especially an overclocked version like this one. The RAM, the RAM actually got a really good deal on. I got two sticks of G-Skill 2133 megahertz DDR4 RAM, that's two sticks of 16 gigs, totaling 32 gigs of DDR4 for under $100, $99.99 to be exact. That's a pretty good deal for DDR4 memory, which is constantly going down in price. For storage, I splurged a little bit and spent money on an SSD. I didn't think I was going to originally, but you just can't argue with the performance of an SSD over a traditional hard drive especially now that they're finally coming down in price. What a lot of people are doing now, which is what I decided to do for this build, is use an SSD for your operating system and your most commonly used programs to get that extra speed, but use traditional hard drives, which are a dime a dozen at this point, for your media, your music, your videos, your pictures. So I got four two terabyte hard drives at $54 a piece. I'm going to be doing a RAID configuration for these. So two of the hard drives will be in RAID 0, and another two of the hard drives will be in RAID 0. The first two will be for my footage for my videos. The second two will be used as scratch disks. Uh, without going into the nitty gritty details, a RAID configuration basically allows the two hard drives to operate as one. You're putting half the data on one hard drive and half the data on the other at the same time, effectively almost doubling the speed of your hard drive because it's only having to write half on one and half on the other. The downside to this is that if one of the drives fails, which happens more often in a RAID configuration, you lose the data on both hard drives, which is why I have an online backup system in place, and I also have an external hard drive I'll be moving all my content to on a somewhat regular basis. Um, but I'm not going to be able to store any information on it yet because I don't have the hard drives yet. I ordered them over a week ago and they're still not here. So I will be putting those in here when they do finally arrive, but for now I'll just be relying solely on the SSD for the operating system and my programs 
which is all I really need to get started. The CPU cooler is a CNPR 9900 Max R, the red LED version. And I've done a lot of research on CPU coolers, and from what I found for air coolers, $49 is about the sweet spot. Any more than that, you're kind of getting closer and closer to that water cooling price point, where it may just benefit you to switch over to water cooling because of the performance gains. The benefit of doing air cooling is you can keep the price down if you're not going to do any crazy overclocking. It's got red LEDs, I think it looks really slick, so that's going to be going in here as well. Now for the power supply unit. What's going to be powering this rig is an EVGA Supernova 750 watt power supply. Now you may look at the specs of this computer and think you know, 750 watts is kind of a lot, and that's because when I originally conceptualized this build and was pricing out different components, I was going to use an R9390, and those are extremely power-hungry GPUs. Now, I did actually end up going with 970, which, compared to the R9390, doesn't use very much power at all. So I'm going to be well below that threshold of 750 watts. That gives me room to bump up to a better graphics card, maybe put this in SLI, also overclock my CPU, and see if there's any overclocking room in the graphics card as well. I managed to get this particular power supply, which is 750 watt, 80 plus gold, for $89.99. But of course, if you're doing a build, you don't have to spend that much on a power supply. You can find one a lot cheaper that will be the wattage that may be closer to your specifications and save a little bit of money there. Now to house all of this is this beautiful case here by Fantex. Fantex has some very, in my opinion, very appealing cases at a price point that most people can afford. This one here is the Enthu Pro M. It's an awesome case with a lot of features that you would not expect in a case that I spent $74.99 on, but is currently on sale for less than 70 bucks. So you can nab one of these yourself if you want. As you can see, one of its main features is this beautiful, large acrylic window on the side. It might actually be plastic, I don't know but it looks great. It's also got these detachable filters on top, which make cleaning a lot easy. They can be removed entirely if you want to improve airflow. If you want to put a radiator on top, I won't, but if you want to, it's there for, for your customization. It's also got filters on the bottom, which can be removed simply by sliding them out. Not to mention a myriad of features on the inside. Where this case truly shines is the cable management area behind the motherboard tray. You can see there's loads of room here for cable management, and I did not expect to find this. I didn't know this is going to be part of it, but it actually has these Velcro straps, which make cable management a million times easier. Obviously, you can use zip ties, you can use uh, twist ties, but if it includes these Velcro straps, they make managing your cables extremely easy. They decided to completely omit the hard drive tray near the front of the case, and they did that A, to save money, B, to give you extra space for those extra large motherboards. But not only that, it improves airflow. You don't have those hard drive trays in between the fans on the front and all the components that need cooling in the back. But you can complete this build as is for $1,500. Technically, $1,500.98. So $1,500, you could have this exact configuration. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about some extra features that I personally purchased that you may or may not need. Because I do a lot of video editing and I have four hard drives, I actually need some space for those hard drives. It has loads of mounts for SSDs, so that's not a problem. But the four hard drives take up a decent amount of space. And in the back, accessible behind the motherboard tray, are these little slots for hard drives, but there's only two of them. So I went ahead and bought two of these Fantex modular trays to house my hard drives. They're small enough, they shouldn't really impact airflow, and my components shouldn't get in the way of these, and you can customize where you place them depending on what type of space you need. So this is a great option. It is going to cost you a little bit of money. These two were $5.99 each. On top of that, I also bought a DVD burner, and these are really going the way of the Dodo if they haven't already. I really like the clean look of the front of this case. I'm gonna put it on for the build just to see how it looks, but I'll probably end up taking it off and just putting it on if I ever need it. It was such a great price, I really couldn't turn it down. And my wife's PC, I haven't decided if I'm putting a DVD burner on that one. She's a photographer and a lot of her clients like getting their media on discs. Now I also spent a little bit of extra money on fans. You may not have to buy fans because your case probably comes with some. Mine came with one in the back here, a nice big 140 millimeter fan used for exhausting hot air out of the system and helping keep your components cool. And some will even come with fans in front as well. Mine does not, so I went ahead and bought three fans, two for the front, one to replace the one in the back. These are high-performance Corsair 
AF140s, and of course this is the red LED version. Now they were a total of $18.83 a piece, bringing the total to $56.50 for fans. Now finally, this last bit is completely optional. It serves no purpose whatsoever other than to complement the aesthetics of the case, which of course, if you're going to have a side panel window on the side, it's implied that you want to have something to look at inside of it. So I went ahead and spent a little bit of money on these cable mod red LEDs. Now cable mod are kind of the standard for uh, LED cables at this point. Um, they have this nice magnetic strip on the back, which works great with 99% of cases which use metal components. Uh, it's able to stick to them very easily, um, as opposed to using that like sticky 3M strip type material that makes it very hard to move your cables around and they eventually fall off. The magnets is, is a really great option. They are a little bit more expensive at $22.99 for the 60 centimeter version, which is what I got. Bring the total for these cables, since I have two of them, to $45.98. So without those extra incidental bits, this computer will cost you exactly $1,500. I spent a little bit more money on some more aesthetic things, also obviously fans and hard drive trays, things that you may not need, and you probably won't need as much storage as I have. I have eight and a half terabytes here if you include the SSD. If you're not doing any type of media creation, you do not need that much storage. If you strictly have games, I mean, two terabytes is kind of a sweet spot right now. And that brought the total up to $1,629.33. So you can cut down on the price of this build by about 170 bucks. Well, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get all the components inside this machine and start her up. I pulled out the motherboard, I put the CPU on there, and I managed to get the CPU cooler on there, which was actually really a pain, and that was one thing I was not looking forward to because all the reviews I've seen of this cooler, everyone says it works fantastic, it looks great, but it is a pain to get on. But thankfully, because this is an X99 board, it screws directly into these little standoffs for the motherboard. I don't have to put this little back plate on the back and screw into it. Um, so thankfully, it could have been more difficult. So I got the RAM on there. You can see it right there. It looks so lonely, doesn't it? Because this is an X99 board, so it's got eight slots for RAM. Right now, it's just got those two two sticks of RAM. It'd look a lot better with those filled up, but obviously that would add up to 128 gigs of RAM, which is way more than I need. second fan on. I couldn't get this off so there's actually no screws on the bottom. As you can see it wiggles a little bit. Also got the SSD installed right here in the back. There's also another SSD mount here and if you need a third one there's an SSD mount here. Not to mention the drive trays that go in the back uh, can also support SSDs if you need them to. And also another SSD mount right there. Right now I'm gonna open up the graphics card. There's nothing that exciting, but it's exciting for me. It's my first one, first computer. I got it open. That is a nice box. Okay, now for the main event. I like this soft foam. This is good, more packages should use that. I'm sure it's more expensive, but. Oh buddy, there it is. Okay, there we go. And this video does not do it justice, but this thing is enormous. And just got this massive heat sink with these huge pipes. It's really cool looking. All right, this is what we got so far. We got these two hard drive trays in there. In this case natively has support for two in the back, so I put these two here. The uh, GPU is in there. Fans are all in there. Optical drive is in place. The only thing now is put the power supply in and then route all the cables. Well, it looks like everything is set up. I did have to take out the optical drive. The power supply comes with three uh, SATA power connections, but the way they're configured, you can see how short these things are. And I can't get one to reach my optical drive. And again, I wasn't really invested in the optical drive to begin with, 
so I'm not that heartbroken. If I do need it in the future, I guess I'll just get an extension. But anyway, the main event, we're going to try out the computer. I have it plugged in. Um, I need to flip that switch on. I don't know if it will come on automatically or if I have to hit the power button on the front or the switch here on the board down at the bottom. Um, I have Windows 10 on this USB and an HDMI cable attached, obviously, to the graphics card and to this monitor. I think that's it, unless there's some glaring flaw that I'm not recognizing. I'll go ahead and turn on the monitor and let's see. Oh my gosh, my heart is pumping. I see a light. Let's hit the button and see what happens. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Okay, let's see. What happens? Oh, I don't have a keyboard plugged in! Okay, I only have a wireless keyboard. I hope that's not going to mess everything up. F1 to run setup. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, it works! Oh my goodness! I am so happy! Okay, I won't bore you guys with this part, but basically all I need to do at this point, I'm going to go into settings, I'm going to go to boot, and I'm going to boot from that USB back there, it has Windows 10 on it. So it's basically going to install Windows 10 and then I should be good to go. I have a key, I took a screenshot of it on my phone, so I'll be able to enter the key. Okay, we'll see how this goes. Well, that will about do it, guys. I'm super excited with the way this turned out. I thought the red LEDs were gonna be a little bit much, but I mean, obviously it's subjective, but in my opinion, it looks really great. Um, I'm very happy with the way it turned out. As you can see from the front of the case, it just looks absolutely menacing, and I, I love that. It's very, very cool. Um, by no means is this a super high-end gaming rig. Uh, it's not gonna run the newest titles at 4K at 100 FPS. But it will definitely handle some 1080p gaming on modern titles very, very well, despite the fact that it's really a video editing PC. Um, it's currently running at stock speed on its you know, Intel i7-5820K of 3.3 gigahertz. I am going to overclock that uh, in a future video, see if I can get a little more power out from under the hood. All in all, I'm super excited with the way this turned out. It makes me all the more motivated and confident to build a PC for my wife in the future. And if there is a single thing that I want you guys to take away from this, if you haven't built a PC yourself, if you have the money and the need for a new PC, I would highly recommend doing it yourself. I knew absolutely nothing on the subject before starting it. And as you can see, it turned out pretty great. It took me about five hours of actual build time, which I know sounds like a lot, but this is my first build after all. And I was probably more tedious and careful than I should have been. But I mean, as you can see, it started up great. It's first try. Next time I am not going to install the graphics card until I'm completely done with my cable management. It got in the way a lot and it was really bothersome. But I really appreciate you guys checking out this video. Uh, there'll be links in the description if you wanna follow me on Twitter, stay more up to date with what I'm doing. Uh, not to mention my Facebook page. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe here. Uh, and be on the lookout for more videos on this rig as well as my traditional content that you've seen thus far on the channel. But thanks for tuning in, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.